St. Michael's on wire. Just after midday, police block off roads, send up a helicopter, then a drone. At 11.36 this morning, they'd received reports of a body in the river just outside the village. They called in divers, who then confirmed the awful news. It hasn't yet been formally identified, but a body has indeed been found. About a mile downstream from Nicola Bully's last known whereabouts, near a park bench overlooking the river three weeks ago on the morning of January 27th. There's been widespread criticism of a police investigation that's being scrutinised at the very top of government. On Friday the 27th of January, Nicola dropped her two daughters at school and then at 8.43 took her dog for a walk towards the river. Her phone was later found on a park bench. She was seen by a dog walker at 8.47, a bit further along in a field. At 9, she dialed into a work meeting. Ten minutes later, she was seen in the next field by another dog walker. A week later, police said they believed that Nicola had somehow entered the water. Our main working hypothesis, therefore, is that Nicola has sadly fallen into the river that there is no third party or criminal involvement and that this is not suspicious. But under pressure and with little progress made, they began to share deeply personal information about Nicola's medical history. As soon as she was reported missing, following the information that was provided to the police by her partner Paul and based on a number of specific vulnerabilities that we were made aware of, Nicola was graded as high risk. The Home Secretary, Suella Braverman, demanded an explanation for the private health information the police went on to disclose. Lancashire Police referred itself to the police watchdog and promised an internal review, followed by a high-level intervention from the Prime Minister. Well, I agree with the Home Secretary and, like her, I was concerned that that private information was put into the public domain and I'm pleased that the police are looking at how that happened in the investigation. The context, would the police have been so free to share the personal health records of a missing male? There is a wider issue about the way in which the, the police has dealt with particularly violence against women and girls and, of course, with standards around misogyny and around approaches towards violence and abuse within police forces themselves. Some senior officers have defended the investigation, pointing out missing person cases are incredibly tricky. Lancashire police say procedures to identify the body they recovered are ongoing, and the death is currently being treated as unexplained. They add that Nicola Bully's family have been informed of today's sad developments, and their thoughts are with them at this most difficult of times. Well, former Metropolitan Police Officer Simon Harding joins us now. Of course, the body has not been formally identified, but what do you make of these recent developments? Well, obviously, there's a, there's a process to go through now, and um, that formal identification of the body is the most important thing now, so that we don't, again, jump to conclusions about uh, who it might be. Obviously, there's lots of information which lead us to believe that it might be Nicola, but... You know, it's very dangerous to go straight into that, especially with families who are waiting on information. So the formal process will has to be uh, through DNA or they will have a sample of DNA already from Nicola uh, and they will compare that against the body. And then obviously it might have to go through, it will have to go through really a post-mortem to establish the cause of death. That's the next stage really for the, for the investigation. And people have been and will go on asking questions about the police search because it has been three weeks since Nicola Bully disappeared. Yeah, they will. But, the you know, if somebody does go into water, it, it can take that while before the, the body, unfortunately, comes to the surface in, in, in some circumstances. But the, the reflection now and the, the learning is the next part as well. The the the. The, the, the constabulary, Lancashire constabulary, have to have to think about now other other stages, the peer review of their investigation, how they dealt with things on the 10th of January, the IOPC are in there as well, looking as an independent body. The uh, the, the Lancashire are going to have their own independent, uh, sorry, their own internal investigation. So these are the things now to to sort of promote that transparency in what they've done. 
What questions will the police now be asking themselves, do you think? I think they'll look at all the different aspects of the investigation, what went well uh, and what didn't go well. And obviously the, the main focus of the press and the public has been in the in the messaging. That's the thing that really from the outset hasn't been uh, particularly w well received. And I think it was a little bit confusing. Um, it, it gave the opinion that they were ruling out everything else when essentially everything is on the table all the time. You know, all the different hypotheses they talk about uh, should all have equal weight. Um, and you want to make sure this isn't luck than judgment, really. You know, there could have been other circumstances surrounding this. And they just need to make sure in the future that look back, take a step back, get an independent uh, people to look at it, perhaps another force to peer review and really go through it with a fine tooth comb. And how unhelpful do you think the presence of social media sleuths has been on the scene? Well, it's, it's going to be incredibly unhelpful because you, you, you start taking away uh, officers who, who could be uh, deployed elsewhere on the lines of inquiry that the senior officers want them to do, having to go through all these different um, stories and made up things that people are putting on social media because you have to just really make sure that they are not true and um, that can take away your resources and it's a very, uh, you know, a very difficult investigation when people start doing what they've done in this particular case. Okay, Simon Hardin, thank you very much for that insight. Thank you.